Did you know that seven out of 10 businesses fail? I'm gonna share a blueprint with eight concrete steps to help you drive product innovation and build a profitable business using real case studies and data from product management, business agility, and product operations. I was coaching the commercial banking division of JP Morgan Chase. Customers of the commercial accounts are similar to retail banking customers. Just like you have checking, savings, credit, and mortgage accounts with the bank, large corporations like McDonald's, Microsoft, and others have commercial accounts with large banks. One of the service line was to offer commercial loans. So when a customer like McDonald's would like to open new franchises, they would request a loan from the bank. From the time they apply for the loan until they get it, it would take a long time and there were no clear notifications of where the loan is at any time or what documents are required at different points in the loan process. As their product coach, I decided to use design thinking. I invited key subject matter experts, bankers, operations, technology staff, and other relevant members. We locked ourselves into a conference room for the next five weeks. The first week, we drew on flip charts the current state of the customer journey from the time a loan is applied to when the customer gets the loan. At the end of the week, we engaged a friendly customer and got their feedback. The next four weeks, we spent drawing out the future steps. We got feedback from the same customer and refined our process. We had come up with several improvements, including arming each banker with an iPad that had a clear view where the customers would need to upload some documents, when should we be sending out notifications at what steps, and streamlining several steps that were done manually, now done automatically or systematically, and that would mean fewer mistakes and less time to approve the loan. At the end, we approached the CEO with a clear business plan and roadmap of how to streamline their commercial loan process. This success helped us compete with several fintechs who were taking away our business. Hi, my name is Anil Jai Singh. I'm a certified Scrum trainer with Scrum Alliance, adjunct faculty with the NYU's graduate program of project management and CEO and co-founder of Concepts and Beyond, a training and coaching company that helps clients build innovative products and grow profitable businesses with Agile, DevOps, and principles of product management. I distilled this successful experience into eight concrete steps that I would like to share with you in this video. The first step is to ideate. Uber's founders, Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp, on a snowy evening in Paris, were struggling to find a taxi. A thought struck them. What if they could get a taxi on the touch of a button? They dove deeper into potential customer problems. Finding a taxi during peak hours, bad weather, or in less busy areas was often difficult. Hailing a taxi on the street or booking one via phone was not always convenient. Dealing with cash or credit card payments in a taxi was often cumbersome. And customers couldn't estimate the fare before the ride is over, leading to potential surprises. This is how Uber was born. So how do you ideate? Get your team together, brainstorm on problems they have experienced, give everybody monopoly money to vote for the problems they will pay the most for. This is where your ideation journey begins. Second one is to do product discovery. McDonald's was struggling to boost their milkshake sales against Burger King milkshake. Despite extensive customer feedback and improvements, instead of asking how to improve the milkshake, they took a different approach. They approached customers and discovered that many bought milkshakes as a breakfast item during morning hours. Customers needed something easy to consume while they were driving to work, filling their stomach enough to last until lunch and not get messy. Alternatives like bananas, donuts, and bagels didn't meet these needs as effectively. Realizing this, McDonald's focused on the breakfast market. This new strategy, recognizing milkshakes as a convenient breakfast option rather than a treat, significantly increased their sales because now they were competing against the whole breakfast market as opposed to only competing with Burger King for milkshakes. So how do you do product discovery? Where well, you talk to your customers. Empathy interviews, user personas, jobs to be done, opportunity solution tree. These are some of the frameworks and ideas that you could use to do product discovery. The third step is to validate your business idea. When Zappos.com's founder, Nick Swermum, first started the company, he wanted to test the ability of selling shoes online. Instead of building a full inventory, he used the Wizard of Oz method. He posted pictures of shoes from local stores on his website without actually owning them. When an order was placed, he would buy the shoes from the store and ship to the customers. This approach allows Swimmum to validate the market demand for online shoe sales without the initial high investment in inventory, effectively simulating an online store before fully committing to the business model. This experiment laid the foundation for what Zappos would become, a leader in online shoe retailing 
known for exceptional customer service. To validate your own business ideas, you could use several frameworks like Wizard of Oz, running a crowdfunding campaign, running an ad to find your audience, conducting A-B testing, conducting user surveys, creating a landing page, and so many more. The fourth step is to now decide whether you want to buy a product that does what you want to do or build. In 2009, Amazon acquired Zappos in a deal valued at around 1.2 billion. Prior to this, Amazon had attempted to enter the online shoe market with their own website, but struggled to gain significant traction. Recognizing Zappos' strong brand presence, exceptional customer service, and unique company culture, Amazon saw an opportunity to expand its footprint in the footwear and apparel market. Instead of continuing to build their own platform, Amazon chose to buy Zappos, a move that allowed them to quickly and effectively capture a significant share of their online shoe market. Would you buy or build? That depends. Buying will let you get into the action earlier. You're gonna start running a product and acquire customers. Building from scratch in does involve a lot of risk and a lot of effort, which might or might not succeed. But sometimes you have to do it because there is no such product out there. The fifth concrete step is to build an awesome product team. As product managers, whenever you want to do something, the conventional thought is how. But what you need to think is who can help you. Apple for the iPhone brought together experts from various fields. This team included designers focused on the aesthetics, user interface, and overall user experience of the iPhone. They were responsible for the groundbreaking design that set the iPhone apart. Engineers that worked on the technical aspects, ensuring that the phone's hardware and software work seamlessly together. They were pivotal in integrating advanced features into a user-friendly device. And marketeers, they developed strategies to successfully introduce the iPhone to the market. They understood customer needs and references, helping position the iPhone not just as a phone, but as a lifestyle choice. Building a high-performing team requires you to know why and what will be the team's impact infusing your team with psychological safety, motivating your team, and empowering them with purpose, autonomy, and mastery, strong leadership, and playing an infinite game. The sixth step is to create a million-dollar offer to multiply sales. One thing I learned from Alex Homrozzi's book was about how to create an insane offer using the concept of value ladders. By breaking down the psychology of pricing and perceived value, you can differentiate and optimize your product offer until it's irresistible. The seventh step is to launch your product. Gil Hiddlebrand is launching a new product, subscriber.ai. He writes and posts a lot on Twitter, talks a lot about YouTube and how to write better hooks, better content and better call to actions. He researched videos from Iman Gadzi, a famous YouTuber with over 4 million subscribers. He created a Notion page with all the titles and hooks that Iman uses that gets him the views and subscribers. He began to tweet about it and had a call to action to download his Notion page. He asked me on Twitter to sign up for his newsletter. I do. And then he informs me that he has a version of the product launched early which is an AI tool that breaks down any YouTube video into hooks, main content, and call to action. That's the second value ladder. Now, his main tool is launching at the end of February. He then keeps you hooked with emails talking about the upcoming features and asking you to sign up for a wait list for his main product. So how do you launch a product? You launch using three methods. Connect your leads with the problem they're having to build a list, keeping them hooked and interested in the overall value by adding iterative value. And finally, launching with the product list that you are spending the money to build the product that your audience really wants. And finally, number eight is to scale your business with product operations. Okay, so you launched your product and it started generating revenue and customers. Now you launch another one to continue the momentum. And then the third one, now you're building a portfolio of product. That means increased hiring and different departments for each product, along with different ways of doing the same thing. Each department is focused on their own product lines and does not find it important to share information. Does that sound familiar? Although Agile broke down multiple silos, there is still a gap between sales and marketing teams and product development. Product operations arose from this need to bridge this gap. Instead of being sales-led, every company is thinking about being product-led, which means that product operations is here to drive analytics to make data-driven decisions. In this channel, I like to share my advice, experience, backed with stories and data to help you with product innovation and build a profitable business. If you like to start today, then download my product sheets that assist you through eight concrete steps 
to build an innovative product. And if you like my video, click the like button and subscribe to my video. See you next time.